I'm glad to see you again. Yes. I'm, <laughs> we got I'm, some things to talk about. We do. I mean, first and foremost, we need to talk about where we ended the last conversation, yeah. which was, yeah. what would you do if you were not in sales? And I guess that you would be an architect. Yes. Now, before I answer, I, I'm curious, why an architect? I mean, it's pretty uh, obvious because I know <laughs> some parts of you, like where some of your passion comes from and how you rebuilt a lot of things in your house. So that that's kind of my guessing. And a lot of it you did as well, like in between stuff, but also because you are also done it to help other family members. So I figured there yeah. must be a passion, must be some deeper level interest in this uh, profession. So that's why I guessed it. Okay. Okay. No, that's that's a great guess. You're very close. Potentially, let me let me also add another one. There could be a, a second one if I get to have two. Uh, okay. Following that would be um, like an app or web developer. Well, that's actually so. I, <laughs> so see, I knew it. Well, be before the oh, internet, no. I might have been like an architecture or like a contract, a general contractor, um, yeah. because I, I, I do really love to build. And it's one of those things where I didn't realize how much I love to build until I, I got older as an adult. Um, but I really like to express myself through like creating. And, um, you know, with sales, there's an aspect of that where you're creating, you might be creating like a, a playbook, your messaging, your, your strategy. But it's a whole other thing that you, when you create something that gets used um, by another person. So, um, and today, if today, if I could go back, and I would, I would have, you know, took the the computer engineering, computer the software engineering path, and like I would have been like a an, an engineer at Google or something. Yeah, I can. <laughs> God see. willing, you know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Until see that, it's never too late. You can still do it whenever you want to. Well, I'm doing it now. Like I, exactly. I'm, I'm full time, like writing code, yeah. uh, you know, to get Jobski off the ground. So, and th this is really where I've like it's really reaffirmed my 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 passion and and um, I really enjoy. I actually really enjoy writing code, <laughs> like talking to like I, I'm actually an introvert. I'm an introvert, and what I mean by introvert is like obviously I can you know, like handle myself in a room with people. I can communicate. I can you know, uh, that, that's fine. But I, I define introvert as someone who, an introvert versus extrovert, right? It's like, where do you draw energy from? Some people actually draw energy from being around people. They're like, oh, I need to be around people. It gives me energy. Mm -hmm. For me, it drains, it drains me. <laughs> like, yeah. I can be around, like, I, I'm, a, I'm a great social. I can, I can hang with the best of them. But at the end of the day, I'm going to be ready to take a nap. I'm going to be ready to go to sleep. And yeah. that's just, that's just me. So I, I, I'm an introvert at heart. And yeah. so being able to write code and stuff like that really is like, it, it, it feeds that side of me where I can just literally be in my head and put things out there and create things. Mm. Yeah, no, I hear that. And what I'm also hearing you saying is that after we met up, uh, you know, when I <laughs> to your side of the world, uh, that you must've just been passed out after that, like exhausted from socializing and being, you know, in the best company. Yeah. Yeah, I was definitely tired, but it wasn't just because like, of no, socializing. Actually, we, the we, we also had a cup, we also had a few drinks. <laughs> 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 that also put me to sleep, but uh, yeah. No, but I no, hear definitely. you though, on like what's energizing you, what's not, because I would describe myself as this term I saw on Instagram a while ago. I think it's called like, introverted extrovert or extroverted introvert okay. something like that anyway basically it's a hybrid is <laughs> how I define it someone who's like I definitely get energy from other people and being other people's company and like it drives me and I can be very much like lively in those scenarios equally I can be in a room of people and be very quiet and it's usually because one it most likely it's because I'm nervous or anxious and then I just yeah quiet and I actually didn't realize that until uh my boyfriend pointed it out to me not long ago he's like I noticed when we were in this setting and how you were just kind of quiet and I was wondering like what was going on but then I realized that you're probably nervous but a little anxious and I was like yep that's exactly right uh, because then you can find me in other scenarios you know where I'm like super comfortable in the company of whoever I'm with uh or the place and then 
all I do is talk and laugh and joke. So it really depends on the setting, you know, but equally, like I do get a lot of my energy from, <laughs> it's going to sound weird, but my dog, <laughs> uh -huh. I, I just, she keeps me so calm and cool and collected. So that's where I get a lot of it from, I think. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. And I, I think being an introvert, you know, it's not like we, we just hate people. I think it's no. more so just like being around people who are intimately uh, like who know us right because I, I i would make that i would make that correction it's not that like i can't be around anybody like if i'm around like my close friends like you were saying like my partner um that doesn't like that doesn't like uh drain me right <laughs> like, that builds me up because they're yeah. like intimately aware of who they, they know me there's no mask they know they know who i am so yeah i think the the socializing and meeting new people and trying to like build those connections is what can be draining and that might be draining for a lot of folks that even might consider themselves as extrovert but yeah i i agree with you on that one yeah well um, oh, cool. okay so now we know what you would do uh, yes most likely a developer of yep apps websites you name it artificial yeah. intelligence yeah love it <laughs> amazing um yep. the other thing we want to talk about was like some transferable skills from whatever industry into tech sales yep. so uh i mean this is like your area right this is what you're building this is what you're creating you know professional yeah um and career development um and transitions yep. and all that stuff so as we're talking through like what those transitions look like where do you want to start because there's so much that could be mentioned. You know, my friend, I, I was thinking about this as well. Um, I was thinking about this so, so much uh, recently. And um, I was thinking what we can do is we can start off with like, what are, what are the skills that are transferable when it comes to non-tech sales careers? So maybe retail, maybe you're selling at like uh, T-Mobile or a phone service. Maybe you're going door to door selling something. Yeah. Um, what are those? What are the skills that do transfer and and set you up for success in a career in in um, B two B tech sales? And then we can then end it with okay, what are the skill gaps and how yeah. to potentially close those skill gaps? Mm -hmm. We can keep it conversational as we usually do. Yeah. But um, I have a list. I have a few things, but I you know I would love if if you, would you like to go first? I mean, sure. you, I mean, I'll, okay. I'll throw some things out there. So I think okay, the okay. obvious ones, right? Which would be like. Okay communication skills you should be able to have a conversation and you know get there like one thing that's definitely transferable if you think about uh, tech sales is like how do you get a prospect's attention right on the mm. phone with your prospect how do you get it on social when you're sending a linkedin message or on a video or whatever email right like attention is the first part uh, how do you get their interest in what you're selling? Same thing if you are in a retail, like, okay, you got their attention. How do you get their interest now to have a conversation with you about whatever that you're doing here and the reason mm -hmm. what they're coming? And the thing is too, if you think about it, like retail, it's an inbound request. Someone's walking into your store, you know, and saying, hey, like I'm here obviously for a reason, unless they're just like window shopping or just browsing. And obviously that happens too, but I think that's one way to translate it very quickly and start to think as, let's say, an SDR when you are not an SDR yet. Um, mm -hmm. Like, okay, so communication, most basic skill, customer service, you know, another pretty obvious one. If you work in retail, you're face to face with customers, um, same thing, same skill sets going to be used in tech. Um, yeah. You know, negotiation skills, you think about that in some instances. Yeah. Um, I mean, those are like the the basics, I think, most obvious we think about. Um, and then there were some other ones I thought about, like, besides that, that could be transferable as well, would be like your ability to have strategic thinking, right? Like mm. your store manager, retail manager, maybe you have other responsibilities um, at this job. And so your ability to kind of show up and, and figure that out, not only logistically in a retail store, but also like strategically, um, I think that's a really good transferable skill. Another one is, again, because you're dealing with people, um, your ability to deal with other people in your team, right? To manage mm -hmm. them, um, to coach them, 
in best practices on how to sell, right? It's going to be, mm-hmm. we, we say selling is selling, but there's nuances to selling in retail versus how you sell a software service. Yeah. So yeah, I'll stop there. I'll pause there at least. <laughs> you, did, you didn't leave me anyone's. No, I'm just kidding. I got, <laughs> <Of course> I <laughs> <did>. <laughs> you left me a couple. You left me a couple. Well, you know, I, I, to me, it's, as you're going through the list and as I'm looking at my list, it, it really sounds like it's those soft skills that, that really can transfer. And so I think that's very important. I think it's, it's, it's something that people should think about as they're thinking about transitioning into tech and, or if they're just building their career, um, regardless, like the soft skills are really what makes you a great salesperson. That's the difference between being a, a, an engineer and a salesperson An engineer. It's like, okay, how quickly can you code? Uh, you know, do you know the code? Like, do you know the, the different uh, aspects of this language, right? But whereas when you're in sales and you're in a customer facing role, it's really like your mastery and your ability to, um, to hone in on these soft skills. Yeah. And so a couple of things that I had on my list, um, that I'll just do the ones that you, uh, you, you didn't mention was like a curiosity and the ability to ask great questions. So I think that's also something that can transfer regardless if you're selling a cell phone or if you're selling um, security software like it, you're if you have that natural curiosity about yourself you can ask great insightful questions that is going to really set you up for success in a career in tech sales because it'll just you'll learn faster you'll you'll have you'll build better relationships you'll get better insight um, and I think on that point the, the ability to learn is also very important so it, you know I think if you have a learning mindset if you know how and where to find information, That'll also set you up for success, regardless of what you're currently selling. It's super important um, because a, a lot of times companies aren't really prioritizing professionals that are already in their industry. They're prioritizing salespeople who have those soft skills. So mm-hmm. if you're a quick learner and you can learn a new industry, quickly learn the new lingo, that'll really set you up for success. Um, yeah. Yes. And oh, go ahead. I also want to add to that, like, one I one thing I would think about if I was in that position where I'm like, okay, let's say I work in a retail store, whatever store that is, I'm going to get into tech sales. Um, how how do I do that? What's that jump? And I think one world in which that person can understand will be retail sales. Um, the translation to the tech world will be something like in you know e-commerce industry. So. Yeah. Now we have connected the dots and now we can can start learning more about that industry and we can start like connecting the dots from what am I doing in store selling these sneakers or trainers and how does that translate into this e-commerce world where they're being sold and, and what that, you know, journey and process looks like. That, that That's yeah. a lot to dig into. You can do so much with that. They can go into sales, they can go into marketing, they can do whatever they want to do from there on, but I think that's just like a different way to think about it. Like, how do I actually translate what I've learned about in this job, in this world, in and apply that to the next one or the new one? No, that's that's a big one. And I often give people that advice too. Like, what are you interested in? Like, what are you what are you doing? Like, what are you doing today as your job? Or what are you interested in? All right, if you're a teacher, okay, there's ed tech software, right? So mm-hmm. like whatever it is that you're interested in, there's likely a software company building something to serve that industry and you can make the leap. Um, but again, just to, just to wrap up here on, on my list here, um, I would say the last, the last thing, the last, I'll say the last two things. So if you're in sales, regardless of what you're selling, you probably have a basic understanding of return on investment. So you always need to think through that lens when even when you're in B2B sales, it's like, like what is the benefit for the buyer? Like what return are they going to get? And so um, like that benefit analysis is also something that like is very much a transferable skill and something that you'll leverage. Mm-hmm. And then the final, I would say the final thing and the, probably the most important transferable skill, especially if you're going in from uh, some other industry into sales as an SDR or BDR, is drive and grit. Mm. Like if you have drive and grit, right, with your with your current role, if you have a hunger to be the best and succeed, like you will def that definitely translates into tech sales. Like, um, oftentimes you don't have to be the the most savvy or the, the smartest salesperson. If you're the most hardworking and like you have the highest drive, 
that will, you know, that will help you in finding a, a success in your career as well. Mm. Yeah, I think my that thought. point, yeah. um, you know, that if you do have that mindset, it's like, what's your mindset like? Because yeah. you could be doing anything today, be working with anything, you know, from one end to the other, but your mindset isn't quite there, right, to go after it or to go the extra mile or to spend the extra time because reality is what it also means when we're having this conversation around transferable skills if someone wanted to move from one industry to the next what we mean what's going to happen is one expect like a lot of work to be put into that process of learning you know yeah. tying that into what you talked about earlier like curiosity you have to be curious and that also means you have to spend a lot of time learning about something yeah. new and connecting with people they haven't connected with before stretch yourself way out of your comfort zone and doing something that you never done before right mm -hmm. meet people you never met before um explore places you never knew like most people are going to be in that zone of you don't know what you don't know so now is your opportunity to learn all those things that will be you know valuable to you uh yeah, yeah. but what the difference is and the differentiator is i think the mindset if you do have that mindset of I'm going to succeed, I'm going to make this happen, I'm going to make it work somehow, even if that means that I'll start at this level, because I have this vision, then that's cool. Like we all started there. We all started somewhere. So yeah, it always starts with the sure. mindset. Yeah. yeah. Because you can be hardworking. You can be the one who's like, but I put in like 500 applications for this job. And it's like, great. But what else? What else? Because it's not just about hey, yeah. Putting five hundred applications is not the way to go. Exactly. I mean, I've been there. I've been there, but yeah, like it's about I think, uh, cutting the corners in the process of doing something, and like, that's what takes time. Yeah, definitely. But you know, I do hope though. I do hope that like so. What we did, you know, for the listeners is you know we just gave you like a rundown of skills that are very much important when you're building a career in, in tech sales yeah. that hopefully you have already like a lot of these things if you're doing sales elsewhere this should give you confidence that like okay i i have a lot of these skills that they they, they just listed out here i might be able to transition into this new world of b2b sales yeah. but now let's let, let's let's touch on like um let's touch on what are the potential skill gaps like if you're coming from a retail sales or you're coming from a, any type of consumer selling uh, role, what are some skill gaps that people might need to work on in order to prepare themselves for a role as an SDR or account executive? Um, it's the foundational stuff. Like, you know, it's just like how, well, while we're already in this industry, right? We Let's say we started a new company even though you know sales, you don't know this company. So now I have to learn about this company in particular. And it's the same yeah. thing here. It's like, you got to take it a step back and say, okay, well, you got to start with building the foundation, an introduction to what the foundation in SaaS looks like. So yeah. that's really where it begins. And I mean, there's so many courses and things available online for people to take. So that's like step one, like an understanding. Yeah, like a bootcamp, a course, something like that. Like tons of them out there that are free. I would start there rather than just starting with a bunch of one-to-one -one conversations because you get very like a lot of biased opinions on that. Not to say you don't get it from a boot camp or a course because it usually comes from a company who have people that they advocate for to communicate the message of what sales. And I is. guess what what is the foundation for folks that are listening that have no idea what tech sales like? We should explain what the like what the foundation is. Are you saying yeah. it's like? what is a what is prospecting <laughs> like what is negotiate like what is a, um what is a demo <laughs> like because these are things like before i broke into tech sales well, yeah. i don't know what a demo is like right that's not the that's not the lingo that or, these other industries use or you know from i remember when i started i was so confused bless me um but i just i didn't know anything about tech sales like literally not i was like i I mean, other than the most basic stuff, but I didn't know how to do my job, essentially, yeah. is how, <laughs> how it was like. And a lot of it was just learning on the job, reading books, Googling things like, what's an MQL? What's a BDR playbook? <laughs> you know, yeah. like, what What yeah. are you with the playbook? Like, and, yeah. you know, the kind of person I am, I go and read everything because I'm just like, I need to understand what's going on here. 
but uh, it's some of those basic things but it's also like okay how how do you prospect right if you've never been in tech sales there's a way that companies want to advocate for this is how we tend to do outbound prospecting you know this is how we deal with our inbound lead queues this is how we when what is an inbound lead like you know like basic stuff like this is like welcome you just enter this new world this new galaxy of rules and regulations and how you operate like that's what you basically get to learn in the foundational course but what tend to happen a lot of the times because I've observed a lot of these other courses I have people friends who've taken some of these other courses around is that it becomes very much like opinion based sometimes like oh this is how you do sales because this is what's really worked for me and it's like that that's an opinion right that is depending on a lot of different factors why something works for you versus me uh but at the end of the day like we have foundation to kind of just set the tone like this is majority of the time what's expected for you in these types of roles and here's the foundation introduction to what SaaS and what sales customer success um, any of the other department, what that typically looks like. No, definitely. Definitely. I think the foundation is key. And, um, and, you know, it's, I, I hope we're not scaring listeners because it's really not that it's not, it's not to it. I mean, it's just the same stuff that you probably are already doing. It's a different lingo, different like prospecting. All you're doing is you're getting your own customers. You're like, you're going out and doing the outreach. Right. So I think having a basic understanding of the lingo so you're not thrown off in these interviews because once you're in the job, these catch these catch these phrases, you'll get them in like within your first month. So exactly. but one I had two things. I had two things. One the, the obvious one that I had was mm -hmm. demoing. Mm -hmm. So this isn't as relevant if you're going in as an SDR, because SDRs don't usually demo. But if you're going in like say you've been selling like um uh, you know, uh, uh, like a, a, you, you've been selling a high end product, maybe insurance or something, real estate. Like you know, you're a professional out here. You're not new to your career. The one difference though is that you like a demo and being able to present a product virtually mm -hmm. is there's like an art and science to that. So I would say that's the one skill that you'll need to acquire. So. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's... the biggest skill is about that in my humble opinion it's not so much about can you virtually present and do you know what content to present and how to present it virtually I think people know some of that hopefully maybe, maybe not I don't think so however where I think the 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 missing point is highly underrated that people should practice and can practice is the timing of these presentations and demos the timing I think well I think I think that 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 goes all into it. The timing, how to use it. I I remember my my first demo, yeah. my first demo. The mouse was I like my mouse had ADD. Like it was all over the place. Like so, it, it's when I say how to demo, it's not just like how to turn on Zoom and share your screen. It's like the timing and mm -hmm. um, the just the, the etiquette. Yeah, uh -huh. it's like how how to how to how to present a virtual product like and yeah. and that and manage that entire meeting. So I would say that's like the obvious thing. Like. That's something that if you're not in tech sales, if you're not doing something relatively close to that in your current role, that is a skill that you're going to need to develop. And I, I also think with repetition, that is also something that becomes easy. Um, and a quick tip, you can probably start, like people can start to hone in on that skill simply by just demoing a product they already know, demoing Zoom. <laughs> like, right. Okay, like whatever it is, like, okay, here's how you do X, here's how you do Y. Uh, and then, the most important skill that I think may not translate if you're not already in tech sales or you might not have, this is the most important one. And it's, and, and it's one of the most important skills that you can have as you, once you're in the industry mm -hmm. is business acumen. Oh, I business guess. acumen. And I think it kind of plays into what you were saying with the foundation, but business acumen is like, that's the aspect that where there might be a learning curve, especially, especially if you're a, a new professional, generally speaking. Yeah. Because excuse the dog, but uh, the dogs are really like, yeah, business acumen. Um, <laughs> but okay, one second. Really, all business acumen is is like your understanding of how businesses work internally, as well as like 
externally what what the goal of a business is what how, how the different roles within an organization work together and stuff and like what's important what's their typical goals and so i would say that's actually the most important thing about sales because if you don't have business acumen then you'll never really have a deep understanding and like a solid foundational understanding of so your potential customers yeah. and why you're reaching out to them yeah if you don't understand the goals of business um and this is actually like a great place to start even before you get into the job and now expect it to understand it it's like do your homework on what kind of SaaS company do you want to work for what kind of solution are you interested in selling or supporting um you know do i believe in this like just the fundamental basic things and also that guides you into knowing the types of people most likely I will be talking with when I'm prospecting are those people I can connect with. Do I have an interest in those conversations? Because if you don't, it's going to be a forced conversation, which is not going to come off very naturally. And I'm sure we've all been in situations, right? You've been in situations. I've been in situations where you're talking to someone and you're just like, what? I, I, what? <laughs> like, you know, you just. I do. I do. I do think that could be learned, though. I mean, of course, I, it can I, be I, but when we talked about passion earlier, this is a part of it, right? Like you want to try to closely align something that you're going to spend all these hours doing to something that you're passionate or interested about. Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Where do we go from here? Well, we go, I, I you know, well, I do want to give people tips on how they can increase their business acumen. Um, one thing that's been really helpful for me is podcasts, actually, like, um, I really enjoy listening to pod and watching podcasts that mm -hmm. talk about business and venture capital and startups. Um, there's the All In podcast. There's This Week in Startups. There's Bloomberg. There's um, there's just a number. There's, uh, if you're black, there's Earn Your Leisure. They talk about financial literacy generally, but like they they touch on different uh, business topics. So um, I would say start there. Start taking in content that is in the world of business and. Uh, and then I would also say is use job ski to find some mentors because yeah, you can find a mentor, you can find people in the in tech sales who can, you know, speak with you about their career, what they do to on a day to day, um, how their job fits in within their company. They can maybe even talk to you about the business of their customers so you can get an like a, a holistic understanding of that world. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, I mean, whether it's on job ski or other platforms. Find someone that you can talk to that can give you insight into their world of business, and it'll it'll just increase your whole understanding and in, in your business acumen, um, generally speaking. So, th those would be my tips for folks when it comes to like learning about tech and business and increasing their business acumen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you on all that. The only thing to add, and like job skin itself is a community of people uh, with tons of resources, but there are also like specific sales communities uh, that could also be beneficial, I think, to get a broader perspective of what that looks like, right, in that world, in that culture uh, overall. So, yeah. Um, okay, cool. So, But now... we got to give a shout out to Jossie. Cause... Oh, we do. Shout <laughs> out to Jossie. Uh, I mean, any, any other platforms too? I mean, there's a lot of them. And there's also free communities too, like, yeah. you know, sales for the culture black and tech um there's a lot there's a lot uh of culture of rev i mean there's a whole lot of communities rev genius, um, uh, rev genius. Rev ones pavilion rev, I mean, there's, so there's, there's so many there's so mm -hmm. many but i would i would definitely lean towards checking out jobski only because it's a, it's a new and also jobski's mission is to uh help uh, folks advancing their careers and uh, and I'm the founder so if you exactly. <laughs> and I'm the founder you know it, it, so, this is our podcast but go yeah. ahead what's what's next like what else do we talk about I mean I think this will be I think this will be extremely beneficial for folks there's a lot of people trying to break into tech right now um, as um, as a sales professional yeah I I hope so it's always um, it's it's interesting to see the journey for someone when they do go through this change and change is interesting because this is another one. When we're in sales, tech sales specifically, we're expected to sell change to our prospects. Embrace change, yeah. right? That's why this product will help you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's interesting because if we turn that around to our own private lives, it's like, 
how many are willing to embrace change in their own mm-hmm. lives and take on that journey, right? As much as we're maybe preaching or selling it as an idea to prospects. Um, so that's just like my food for thought for this week is okay. Cause I've always, I always thought about that early on when I started was I quickly noticed this thing of, hold on, why essentially, cause I tried to like summarize like what's happening here because it's a new world to me tech sales and i'm like it seems like this is what's going on that people are essentially selling the not just idea but the reality of change because this can lead to something bigger for you as an organization that's why the solution is going to make a difference and it's like ah okay so if we can sell that then why can't we sell the change for ourselves to get better at something but for someone right now like think about that in a way of how do I now break that change and get into this field if this is the field you want to get into or apply it to whatever it is um yeah yeah. it's uh you know it it starts with the man or woman in, in the mirror and uh you know here's my thoughts on it you can fake it to make it that's a fact and sometimes you do have to fake it to make it right no, you can no, no, no let, hold on no, listen let me no. finish you gotta let me this let is me gonna finish. be our first argument no 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 <laughs> well it, it can't be an argument. you have to let me finish yeah okay. i have to okay i'll let you finish you can you can fake it to make it right uh-huh. and so uh you can fake it to make it to get into that career but in order to stay consistent in order to like really advance and build your career you do need to check your mindset eventually and you need to become a person that has a growth mindset um uh you know like a, a curiosity about you like you might be able to break into tech with a, like a, um without having the right mindset you might you might be able to and if you fake so. it till you make it this is where I fundamentally disagree that I don't think but sometimes you have to sometimes some people don't have some people just don't have that mindset like they don't and so what do we tell them like get the mindset i i'm more of the like hey force yourself even if you don't believe force yourself still go through with it because sometimes what will happen is like you fake it and you you get there and then it's like oh wow like it gives you confidence and now you're no longer faking it like this is you this is you're in the world Mm. that's what i mean by it i mean yeah yeah we're gonna have to agree to disagree on this one but okay okay i am also known to want to have the last words i'll just finish with this (laughs) (laughs) uh i no i the audience will have the last word the audience will be in the comments like always the last word you know what i'll change my way of thinking around this until i get to have a conversation with someone or a few people not just someone not just one unicorn but a few people who can all say and align that yep fake it till you make it actually works and holy well, shit what, what don't what don't you like about fake it till you make it like, what, don't, what don't you like about that phrase because it's not authentic to me and it also means that what like if you believe that you can fake it till you make it and still possess those skill sets like the right mindset and all those things then if you did then you wouldn't have to fake it to make it because you would already be there so that's why I can't agree with it and like I said I think it's just not being yourself then like you're hiding or removing I... part of yourself in order to make it so it's like when when people say well it's like this right it's like me <clears throat> basically if I was the person who was like, oh yeah, I can't show up in job interviews. Because this happened in real life. I was applying for internships and I quickly learned that in living in Boston at the time on the East Coast, that yeah, I can't just show up to these corporate interviews for these big companies here, it, like these institutions, uh, just simply being me. That's not going to cut it. I'm not going to make it. So that's why it's like, someone could then have said, I could have said, well, all right, I'm just going to fake it till I make it. I'm just going to change my appearance. I'm going to change the way I am, you know, to fit into this box. Um, And therefore I would make it. And that could have been true. But I think that's why I don't like the whole idea around fake it till you make it, because it just seems inauthentic. I think that's just, I think, I think um, somebody said a 
quote that just stuck with me. But I think that's just the reality of the matter. Like, as much as I want to be my authentic self at work, the world might not be ready for it. it and that's just the fact of the matter. So it's like, and, and so th there's two aspects of fake it till you make it. There's the fake it till you make it for yourself to like get in. Mm -hmm. And then there's fake, like, there, and then there's fake it to make it externally and showing and like, and to your company, right? So it's like, okay. And I really want to take the time to kind of dissect this here because wait, I wait, think wait. this is- I have an yeah. idea. I have an idea, okay. Sorry to okay. you, but I do okay. want, because we have to wrap up here, otherwise it's going to be- Okay, is this going to be, we're going to bring the, we're going to talk about this on the next episode. Yep, either, that we're we're about, okay. either we talk about it next episode, or I suggest we table it for a roundtable conversation and get some people in who are sitting on both sides. People who strongly believe that you can absolutely fake it till you make it, and then the other side who's like, you can absolutely not fake it till you make it. Okay. Okay, we just have to we have to differentiate between the two. Like, are you faking it for yourself and give it to like because you don't you don't really have the confidence that you can do this, so you're like kind of like convincing yourself, or are you faking like you maybe you're in but you're faking who you are or like things that you might like your true identity in order to like get in or continue to grow within the company. Like those are two different types of fake it till you make it that okay. we should be, we should be talking about and yeah that's going to be a fire episode of this podcast that's so, going to yeah, be <laughs> we're already like opposite ends here which is really interesting uh not what i expected. I think we're i think we're closer <laughs> than we i think actually we're closer than what i think we're actually closer I, now that i understand what you're saying yeah and maybe it's me uh thinking about this until the next conversation and reflect on what it could mean when you say fake it till you make it fake it till you make it people mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, this is a good one. This, this, this is a good episode all right well well galem you know as always it's always a pleasure connecting with you and uh, i look forward to seeing you on the next episode i can't wait to see you thanks for a good chat all righty